Good. Hey, Clayton. Hey, bud. How are you? Good. Are we on, I guess? I'm... We are. There was some other situating that happened over there with a sewing machine. Make sure it was all in correct working order so we don't screw it up like we did the is last that, time. Is that where you're doing? Okay. Yeah, you should probably make sure. I don't want to no, make you look a fool like you did. You know? <laughs> we had you get it all set up so it's ready to go. So I tried to get you talked into a duffel bag pattern. You had And you said, how about a mini duffel bag? And yeah, I said, what much. if we call it a travel bag? Yeah. So we're going to do the travel bag. Hopefully next Friday, by then, you will have made a duffel bag yourself because you're, the team you have together over in the RD department, they put a kit together for the duffel bag and a pattern. They put together a kit and a pattern. I haven't had a chance. I, I went through and I edited the whole thing. I just yeah. haven't had a chance to build it yet. So I want to make get myself a little more familiar before I tackle it on camera. And it's probably going to take more than an hour as well unless we have some put together in probably stages. Probably so, yeah. We'll kind of do a cooking show style maybe. There you go. Yeah. Well, today we have our travel bags. So we've always kind of had a travel bag pattern. It yep. needs to be updated as well. And so we thought it was a good time to make a kit out of it. Yep. So we're clicking out the pieces and you're going to get uh, the pieces that you need to put this kit together. So that is what we are going to do. We're going to make a kit yeah. of it. Comes in this nice little pizza box here. Yeah. And so the parts that come in the kit, you're going to get your pre-cut travel bag piece. That's your main body. And then uh, these two pieces will be the handles that go on the sides. And then you get your nylon zipper tape and regular zipper pull. And so it's a nice, simple, easy little kit. Great for beginners. Um, awesome accessory for anybody. Fits right into your luggage. What, so there were some people that hadn't got caught up on Facebook because there was one other button to click for go live. Oh, okay. So right. they're they're getting in. But if you're on YouTube, you're ready to go. So the, the pieces that you're going to get, I was going to show you. Chad, if you jump over to camera floor, we'll show you the pizza box. Pizza box style. There you go. You can, so you can get that and you're going to open it up. You got some instructions in there, your zipper tape, and then also uh, your big piece. Zipper and zipper tape. All right. Carry uh, on. I just want to, you know, I want to take great care. They did a really good job on putting together some really good instructions mm -hmm. that will kind of walk you through this. Just about anybody can do this. It's yeah. a great beginner project, like I said. So I got to put on the website um, already. The number on that is 144-0789. You can also find it if you type in uh, travel bag kit or in the kits uh, section on the website under shop now. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take some quarter inch basting tape. You can also use just some uh, contact adhesive. Um, and we're going to go ahead and roll these two basically the, the two long edges on this piece right here. So when they get that, is it going to have, is it gonna be skived already for them? Yep. Nice. So we're gonna go ahead and do the bell knife skiving around the edges so it's easy for you to roll this edge and it makes all your seams nice and not too fat. Do you have, okay, I'm gonna make sure you have your snips. Yep. So we're just doing a quarter inch rolled edge. This is the side that the zipper will ultimately go on. So I got a quarter inch piece of basting tape. We can get that peeled off. And then that makes it easy just to fold it right along the edge of that basting tape and stick it down. So do you need to hold this with any binder clips or anything like that? Or does that double-sided tape work pretty well? It works pretty well. Like I said, we'll have this bell knife sky for you already. So it makes it pretty easy to roll the leather over and it stay on its own. I'll kind of roll it over and get it stuck down and then we'll hit it with a, a steel roller to really get it pressed in there and flat. So just trying to take care to get it even all the way across. Throw it on a piece of granite here with a roller. Oh. Yeah, see? Hold on, let me move my camera over there. You know, it's whispering and moving around and you're, you're missing it. This is the best part. Make sure that's rolling out the place. pizza dough. Yeah. Out of your pizza box. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. What else you been up to, Clayton? Been making anything else? Else have I new? been up to? Um, you know, I haven't had a chance to do much crafting as of recently. We've been so stinking busy through the holidays. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with a lot of people still staying at home, we are just 
selling all kinds of craft supplies. So I've been busy with the shop, making sure we're getting some quality product out, getting some training done. Taking care of what we're sending out to people. Right. Trying to make sure we're doing a good job at what we're already doing. Plus making new kits. Yeah. I think we really realized how much went into making quality kits and making sure that everything was done properly. Exactly. There's a lot that goes into it. It's like uh, I've been trying to get digital patterns available online as well and, and gift certificates. I said, oh, that shouldn't be too hard, should it? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> the back end of everything that goes on is make sure that we. You know get the production of it right? right so people are actually getting what they want and minimal headaches so i'm gonna go ahead and talk about hand stitching it okay yeah hand stitching it wouldn't be too bad so i'll just tell you what i'm doing real quick i set my scratch compass to an eighth inch seam allowance i'm gonna go ahead and mark the line right along this edge this is where we're going to stitch our zipper on and so i'll be using a machine in a second to stitch this down but if you're hand stitching it, this would be the line that you'll go along once you get your zipper tape on there and you'll go with your, just punch right down it with your stitching chisel. Yeah, and I, I found a, a little diamond right. stitching chisel there. So I'll show you here in just a second. We went ahead and marked our stitch line. Take a piece of, another piece of quarter inch facing tape and go right along the back side of my rolled edge. And this will help us stick down the nylon zipper tape. This is a lot easier than gluing, it looks like. It's it's pretty quick. Yeah. You know, there's I like basing tape, unless you just have a really oily or waxy leather that it won't stick to, it usually does a pretty good job. I don't know, we have this basting tape in what four different sizes, something like that. Yeah, I think we got an eighth inch, eighth quarter inch. inch, and half inch. I think we have three eighths maybe as well. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I can check the website, and if it shows up at 3 eighths, what are you going to say? No, it, it won't. <laughs> that's that's not going to happen. I'm going to look anyway. Yeah, go ahead, look. It would peel. doesn't want to peel off there. It's sticking too well. I know. If I just had another eighth inch of width here, it would be so much easier, but unfortunately, we don't carry 3 eighths. But we do. We do? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know I am the one that puts the items on the website, Clayton. Yeah, well, maybe you should... Eighth inch, quarter inch, or eighth inch, three eighths, then quarter inch, and half inch. You should tell your guy in R&D whenever you get new products, huh? <laughs> yeah. Actually, it'd be the other way around. Three eighths comes after quarter, then half. All right, I stand corrected. It's okay. This is the one time I'm right during this video. It'll be my time to shine. I, mean, I don't know why you'd ever need three eighths, but you know. All right, so we got both of them peeled finally. I'm gonna take my uh, piece of nylon zipper tape and lay it out nice and straight. And then what I'll usually do is I'll pick a point about about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the teeth that I'm working on, and I'll lay this rolled edge right along it. You can kind of usually uh, pick a line in the nylon to follow and stick it down just as evenly as you can. Yeah, let's see if I can zoom in this one a little bit. All right, got that? We slide that over. Other way. Now uh, if Chad hits camera four. Oh, okay, there we go. So you just made sure that it's even along uh, this from the zipper tape. Exactly, an even amount of distance from the edge of the leather to the edge of the teeth. Now what were you saying that you were trying to find an edge of a tooth? What were you saying about that? Well, I'll, I'll keep it about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the teeth and you can usually follow a line in the nylon. You know, this weave nylon, you can usually just kind of follow a line and stick with so it. So we don't care about like where it lands on these the teeth this way, just the distance from the teeth. Exactly. Okay. Yep, and I'll usually keep about a one inch tag on the end of it here and then we'll trim this side down because we don't need that much excess. All right, so we got that side stuck down. We're gonna go ahead and flip this around. Oh, don't take my tape uh -oh. off. 
See? See what you made me do? I got you all messed up. Sorry. All right, I'm going to lay a little bit of tape back down. I was just trying to best utilize all the visual situations we have, Clayton, so everybody can see what they need to. That's why you're the camera guy. All right, so I'm going to kind of crease that over like that so that we can have the face of the zipper teeth. Is there a certain spot that you needed to do it to, or you were just getting the zipper teeth in the middle? Just getting it folded over here. Um, and then I try to keep my edges flush right here as it folds over. So it doubles over on itself. Yeah. And then we're going to stick this side down. Slide this way a little bit. There we go. So we're going to stick this other side down to the, the nylon zipper tape. Just trying to take care and keep these flush right here. Keep those in line. Nice. Do about the same distance away from the teeth. Oh, we're getting your back of your head in there. <laughs> no, not balding yet. So not balding yet. So no glare on the cameras. All right, got that stuck down. Then we'll go ahead and open up our zipper. All right, got a couple questions here. So what all is included in the kit? Oh, evidently the description isn't yet on the site. So you're going to get the main body. You're going to get the main body of your travel bag. You're going to get the zipper tape, a zipper, and then uh, the handle. One of these will be a handle, and one will be a uh, tab that goes on the end of it. Yeah. So it'll, you got uh, the handle part here, and then the tab part. So everything to make, this is about eight, eight inches, eight and a half by four, four and a half, and about three, um, three and a quarter inches deep, rough, rough measurements. Yeah. So, and th th these are cut out of our uh, regular oil tan, golden tan sienna. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a five to six ounce oil tan. It's got a really nice feel to it. It's just a, a real pretty reddish brown leather. Yep, and your edges will be skived and also be thinned. Uh, I, I can see here that these said three, uh, three ounces on on these. Yep. So exactly, it'll all be thinned out. Ready? All you got to do is what we're doing here. Yep. Pull it out of the pizza box and put it together. All right. So at this point, if you were hand stitching it, you would take your stitching chisel and go along your zipper tape on the leather and just punch it all the way down the edge. We're gonna go ahead and machine stitch it. So oh, it's... switch to four there, Chad. Sorry, you were just punching. Punching here, is that what you said? Exactly. And you want to make sure that you're still catching your rolled edge that you had? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we did a quarter inch rolled edge, so I'll usually do an eighth inch seam allowance. If you did that, was it okay to punch and do basing tape at the same time, or do would it be better to do cement if you're hand stitching? Basing tape's usually fine. Yeah. Sometimes it'll it'll knock it loose a little bit, but usually it'll keep it on there. Uh, we had a question about the basing tape. So I know like with, with on oil tan, you have to rough it up before you glue it. On the on the face side mm -hmm. of the oil tan, do you need do you need to do that? Would it be any benefit to rough it up? No, I don't. I don't usually. Okay. And with this this uh, golden tan sienna specifically, it's not extremely oily and yeah. waxy, so it, the basing tape will usually stick just fine. All right, to the sewing machine. All right. Get my quick snips. So we're going to start at one edge here. So I know you had a roller guide on there, but are you going to use it so you can go faster or? No, it's kind of hard to use a roller guide with this uh, zipper, tape. zipper tape. Yeah, yeah. It makes it kind of hard to follow. So we're just kind of following an edge here. So back stitch at the beginning. Yep. When you back stitch, Clayton, do you do two or three? Or does it really matter? I usually just do two. Three's fine. Doing three. Wow, it's nice when you have somebody that can work a sewing machine and not look like a fool trying to make coasters. I didn't feel so bad because Rusty's didn't really look any better than mine, so. <laughs> I think it just goes to show that if you don't have the machine set correctly, anybody can really. Yeah, it's not going to work right for anybody. Yeah. Just not even holding your mouth is going to make it work better.
Quiet in the chat room today? Are they chatting with each other? Making new friends? How many people do we have of this the first time that they're watching an SLC live video? Maybe they don't maybe they never knew that we did live videos. We started doing huh? First time there's more people on Facebook than YouTube. Really? There are 49 on Facebook. Nice. Well we started doing these uh, live videos. If it, if anything good came out of 2020, it was us doing these live videos, and I think it came out of I didn't have time to um, <laughs> edit the videos. Right. And it gets it's a way that you guys can ask uh, questions. Russ and Kevin get on here from time to time, but a way for you guys to be able to ask questions and we can answer them. If it's about this project, it's about this project. If it's about something else, except for your orders, we probably don't want to give out your order information. <laughs> uh, class 18 Cobra, right? No, no, that's class 20. Class 20. Can't really tell from here, but... I couldn't see around the little class eight. Class eighteen would do the same thing. It would be just fine. It's got a. It started up with just black sixty nine thread, top and bottom. It's All one right. of the older. It's one of the ones that come out of our shop, and it's an older model since it's that right. gray green kind of color that leather machine used to do. Exactly. Yeah. All right, so we got our zipper tape sewn on there. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get our zipper tab on. This can be kind of tricky if you haven't done this before. Yeah. This way a little bit. Um, so what will help sometimes as your nylon zipper tape starts to fray out, you can just kind of melt the end of it just a little bit. It doesn't fray so bad. And so the trick here is we're going to want to put this together inside out, right? Because these will have this will have turned out seams when it's done. So we're going to put our zipper tab on upside down. And so you really want to be careful to get this together as even as possible, right where the zipper tape was cut. And that'll keep the edges of your leather flush, lined up. So I'll kind of go on at an angle a little bit. Yeah, yeah, we, do that. yeah, we'll do it one time that way, and then I'm going to move this camera, and then we'll do it again. All right, so I got it started about halfway through the, the tab with the teeth on one side, and then kind of come at it at an angle on this side. And then just do your best to keep them even and push it on there. All right. Can you can you do it again? Can you take it apart? I can try. All right. All right, Chad. Switch to uh, whatever camera this one is on holding. All right. Three maybe. Got your hand set. Mm -hmm. He's on it. All right. Ready? All right. So again, take your zipper tab upside down. And I'm gonna feed it through at a little bit of an angle. Kind of helps get it started. And so once you got that about halfway through the tab. Hold that in place, take your other side, feed it through, and just try to keep the, the ends of the zipper tape even as you push that tab on. So and since it's inside out, you can see, move your thumb there for a second, there you go. It gets upside down. Exactly. All right, so, Chad, switch back to one there so that, or whatever camera, so people don't get sick. So you can see, I didn't get it perfectly lined up. I think I'm probably one tooth off in one direction, but you can see it makes a big difference in lining up your leather. You can see these two sides just aren't quite even. Is that gonna be, is that a big deal? Uh, if it was way off, yeah, you'd wanna try it again. You know, being one or two teeth off usually isn't that big of a deal. And we can try and even it up a little bit more. Ultimately, if you have a, a um, you're using a quarter inch seam allowance whenever we sew across these ends. You can kind of make up for it. Does anybody have any questions? I know that this is the part that, like, putting a zipper back together for me. Oh, we can see we're focused in on your hair there. Got some grays coming in, Clay. Shh. <laughs> you want me to do these videos? Because. <laughs> that's why I keep my hair short so that my grays don't show. All right, that's a little better. Has anybody, has there been any questions about the zipper tape? Were they able to see that part? I know this is the part that I I struggle with getting that piece it, back on. It can be kind of frustrating for some people, for sure. I, I'm not going to say that I haven't thrown a project on the floor <laughs> that had a zipper that needed to be put back together. All right, so we're going to pause on that, that piece. Okay. we got the zipper on. We're going to go ahead and get our tabs done. So I'm just going to use some regular contact cement. You could also do this with double-sided tape if you want to. I'll just use contacts mix. I think it's a little bit quicker in this case. Yeah. Let me just zoom out here a little bit. Oh, that's in. You always know where you got the contact cement because the leather changes colors. Mm hmm. Very perceptive. 
right. I don't think your kids gave you gray hair. It's probably me. Yeah, probably so. You got a nice beard going on. Thanks, man. Yeah. I know we had Andrew in here a while back, and he had... He had a beard, and he said he measures it every day. You've been be measuring yours? No. Your kids pull on it? It's not really like a hobby like it is for Andrew. <laughs> it's just more not shaving for me. Yeah, well, you put a mask over it, so... Right? It's been undercover for a while. Under undercover, yeah. <laughs> undercover mat, or undercover beard. All right, so I want that glue tack up a little bit. Uh, so we're going to be folding the edges into the center. This is a two-inch wide tab. And so you, what you can do if you want, you can take your scratch compass or whatever marking device you have. Mm -hmm. I'll set it to one inch and we'll just mark a line right down the center on the back of these tabs. Yeah. And that'll give us kind of a guide to fold the edges into. It's funny, some people in the shop will make fun of me for marking all my stitch lines with a scratch compass or marking this, you know, fold line. They say it takes too long, but. We were talking to uh, Denny about it as well, and even when he was, you know, going to be sewing something or it was glued, and he was still marking his to get it straight. You know, you take a little extra time to mark it, and it comes out so much better. You know, quality sometimes trumps quantity in most cases. Yeah, that's for sure. That's just about everything in leather craft. Yeah. That'll be true. Well, I mean... We've talked about before, like pricing your items and, and what are you going to do? How are you going to price items? Well, if you take the extra time, you can add, add a couple extra dollars on there. So we get that folded into the middle. I'm just going to roll it out on the granite with a steel roller. Nice and flat. We'll do the same thing for the other piece. Look at that. Chad got a camera switch there to the granite instead of me trying to run over there and move that other camera again. Smooth. We're getting pretty good in here. talk about locks on the end of the zipper tape. So we're not actually going to be using any locks, any hardware to lock the end of the zipper tape on this project. We're just going to be sewing across it, which usually isn't that big of a deal for nylon zipper tape. You can sew across it pretty easily. If you decide to make your own travel bag and you use like some number five or number 10 brass zipper chain, that might be a little different story. You might want to try some locking hardware and actually cut the teeth and, and not break a needle trying to sew over it. Right. That's what makes us an easy is you don't need it because you're just, you're able to sew over the teeth. Or actually the needle probably goes through the teeth. Right, yeah. All right, so I'm just gonna set my scratch compass again. I don't know, we'll do about a quarter inch. As long as you're, you're catching this, uh, the not in the mid side, right? Not in the not sewing down the center not of your right fold. In the center, yeah. Did you see my new vest I got? Just trying to avoid it. All oh. right. Trying to avoid my new SLC vest. We got hoodies Pretty and long snazzy. I'm not really plates the best guy. And and jackets. Oh, I got a thermal shirt on. Look here, Michelle. Look at this. Look shirt. at that. Bam, a thermal. <laughs> got our winter wear. We're gonna get those put on the website, so if anybody wants to get winter wear as well they can have slc they can wear slc around everywhere they want and that's pretty quality stuff i'll give you that it's pretty nice i can be a t-shirt snob as well so man let go doesn't have a very good break on it so you gotta be careful yeah i remember we were doing some other things and it just kept on rolling through the project I'd say that machine's put its uh, put its work in. Yeah, for sure. So now sewing these two pieces, you actually don't really have to worry too much about locking the stitches because you're going to be stitching across them in and out. So no, no real reason to lock it in because you're it's tucking inside the leather and you're going to sew across it the other way. Exactly. I mean, you can you can hand stitch it. I was closer to the microphone. I didn't, I didn't know if they could hear it, so I was just repeating it, seeing if I could sound smart. But that is duly noted, Clayton. Don't want to have me yet. Yeah. All right. So we got two tabs sewn. Anyway, I was going to say we can talk about you know you can hand stitch this project, but you can see uh, what the machine 
Right. And what the machine kind of does. Yeah. So one of these we're going to leave full length. We'll just leave that one full length. The other one, I it's kind of a personal preference. I like to cut it right about in half. I think these are seven inches long. So about a three and a half inch tab. And this will be the piece that you use for the loop on the side. Let me show you here. So this is the tab you're cutting for this loop right here. So however big you want your loop, if you want your loop bigger, then don't, you know, don't cut it so much in half. Exactly. All right, so then we're going to take another little piece of quarter inch basting tape. You may get you some three eighths. Well, I, I think I got some. I wouldn't right use it if we had it. <laughs> Don't be mad because I was right. I'm Man. not mad. Not mad. Just this, this is just the last video I'm doing. <laughs> Come on. You see that? Uh New cow print leather that we got in. Cow, cow print? Well, no, it's on a cow, but it's printed in a hippo style of Oh, yeah. Print. I didn't see that. Yeah, kind of a em, embossed. Well, not really embossed, but it does have some texture to it and some contours to it. Yeah, that stuff is pretty interesting. I thought that was kind of cool. That elephant on elephant was weird. I'd never seen elephant print. On elephant? On elephant, yeah. All right, so we taped it together so it's kind of st mm -hmm. stuck in a loop. So now I'm going to just take tape around the side, the butt end of it, on both sides. There you go. Double side tape on both sides. Make sure it's good and stuck down. Now fight with the backing to get it peeled off. Thought it came off pretty good, but it came off the leather too, so. False alarm. There we go. Does it matter what side that you're putting this on? It doesn't really matter. Again, personal preference. What I'll usually do, I'll usually have the travel bag close towards the handle, like this one. Mm. And that way your zipper tab can be kind of underneath that handle. So that the so that when you're actually zipping it closed, you have something you have your tab to hold on to to, to zip it close. Yep. So we'll go to the back side of the zipper tab. And what we'll do is we'll flip it over. I don't know if, how well you guys are going to be able to see this. Yeah, that'll work. So our zipper closer is over on this side of it, and our zipper is closed. So we're doing an opposite of the zipper pull. Exactly. So we're going to go ahead and place it right on top, centered with the uh, zipper tape. And since we're flipping it out, you put it on the end you put it facing in. inside yeah okay. exactly yep the loop part of it is facing that way okay oh i'm peeling off my tape with my thumb uh-oh it doesn't have to stick real great just good enough all right and then make sure this side is lined up and we'll stick that down on the tab as well and then we're going to be ready to sew the sides here i'm going to go ahead and take this tab over here because we we'll, should be able to finish it up at the sewing machine all right. I'll let you slide over there. So again, if you were hand stitching it, um, you know, you just go along with your stitching chisel and uh, punch exactly where I'm sewing with the sewing machine. It's pretty well the same steps. So one thing, one issue you can run into if you're machine stitching this is that if you start at the very end, really close. Here, can you move out a little bit? Yeah, just a little bit. If you start at the very end and you stitch towards the tab, you can run into this tab, which is a big step for the sewing machine, and it'll kind of push it off center. So if you want to kind of cheat a little bit, you can just start right on top of the tab and go ahead and sew that sucker in place. That way it doesn't get pushed off center or turned at all. And just kind of lock it in place? Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch right off the side of it. I might do one back stitch where it drops off, just to make sure it's good and strong. And the reason we can do this, Clayton, is because uh, all our stitching is going to be hid inside the bag? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It doesn't have to be pretty. This stitch probably is not going to be very pretty. Oh, man. I want to step off that for a second. Lock the end of it. 
And then we'll go back to the beginning of that. And again, I'm using about a quarter inch seam allowance. That's what the instructions call for. And there is a reason for it. We'll see. Now, did you just walk it to step it up there, mm -hmm. turn it with your hand? Yeah, it's kind of a big step for the sewing machine. You might have to turn it with your hand. I think it'd be a big step for kind of even a three or four, a 26. Wouldn't be as bad for, you know, a cylinder arm machine, a heavy stitcher or something like that. Yeah. Bring me my quick steps. There you are. So what we're going to do here is you're just kind of cutting the thread that you had. Yep. Away. Threads. Let me see if I can zoom out just a little bit. There we are. That's one side of it. Now we need to put the handle on the other side. Not yet. Now oh. on this other side, all we do is all we gotta do is stitch right across it. No handle yet. No handle yet. Okay. I guess it'd help if I read the instructions. <laughs> The only thing tricky about this side, I'll usually stitch from the side uh, without the zipper so that the zipper tape's on the bottom. And uh, you just want to make sure that your zipper teeth uh, stay close together. You don't want them getting spread apart and stitching over it and having a big gap at the end of your back. And you did back stitch on both of these. Yep. And so this is why we don't we don't have to use uh, hard stopping hardware on the zipper. We'll just stitch right across it there, and your, uh, won't go past it. Your threads are your That's stopping stopping hardware. Yeah. Trim it short. Grab my lighter. Oh, I got it in my pocket. All right. I was like, I don't see it on the table, so. Starting some ends. Everybody is really quiet today. Did we even have any new people? Everybody was afraid to chime in that, that they were new. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, if you were to work with leather up to about seven ounces, uh, what's the best sewing machine to get without too much, without taking up too much space? So a sewing machine with a small footprint sewing up to about seven ounces? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, most of your industrial flatbed machines are going to have the same footprint. Uh, they're roughly the same size. Seven ounce is pretty lightweight as far as a leather sewing machine goes. Um, one of our most popular and most versatile machines is our Class 26. We've just been selling we can't, those like crazy. We can't keep them in stock. So we started drop shipping them from Leather Machine Company. And exactly. they didn't even have any in stock. And it's something that we're we're one of the only companies that stocks um, leather machine company Cobra Machines. All right, so this is kind of where a tricky part comes in. Sometimes it helps to kind of open the bag a little bit so you can get your hand inside of it. So to actually give the bag height, we're going to sew across these corners. You can see that very well. Yeah. So basically, you're pinching this corner right here bring those together. And if you did your quarter inch seam allowance right, it should fold right in the corners of the where the part was cut and create a straight line right across it, just like that. Looks like a bird's mouth. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna sew across this bird's mouth. Uh, we're gonna put that in the instructions, I think would be a good idea. Right. Make sure this is that we're doing the side with the tab on it, right? You can see that. Yeah, there we go. This is the side that has the tab on the inside. We're going to go ahead and sew across the corners. The other side, we'll have to put the handle in first before we stitch the corner shut. Anything trippy, tricky whenever you uh, go over the other seam that you have sewn here? It shouldn't be too bad. Like I said, we're going to sky these parts. We're going to bell knife sky the edges so that keeps this other seam uh, pretty thin and yeah. pretty easy to sew over. 
And again, I'll just do a quarter inch seam allowance, make sure I'm hitting the bottom layer, lock on both sides. I have a good question here from Angela. Angela. Uh, tips on uh, skiving soft timber chrome tan like this. Ooh. Um, skiving. So, like, if she wants to skive her edges, I'm mm -hmm. guessing. That's kind of tough. Uh, keeping some tension on it is always good. It, I've, I've had, like, a, a clamp rigged up on the end of my work table. And so that you can clamp the leather on one end and hold it tight with your other hand and then skive it while it's stretched tight. What would you use to skive it then? You're using a round round knife? Uh, you could use a, a fridge skiver. Um, you could use a round knife. You could use a super skiver. There's several tools out there that you can do it with. I mean, I've done it with just a, a, a razor blade before, a utility knife. Mm -hmm. When we do these, we're running it through the bell knife skiver. Exactly. Yeah. MP4, MP10, something like that. Using a bell knife scouting machine, which is makes it really handy. Doing it by hand it can be kind of a trick and definitely takes some skill. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew this other bird's mouth, if you will, shut. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm going to keep this seam folded in the same direction as on the as where I stitched it down on the other side. Let's keep that seam kind of folded upward when I go walk over it. And again, these stitches don't have to, as long as they're straight, straight edge. Yeah, straight's good. Got the to look of it really doesn't matter as much. Right, if you can see my leather's not perfectly flush here, make sure you hit the back side good. Yeah. Um, but that should be fine. It's going to be on the inside, as it turned out. Turned out seam, so it doesn't matter. All right, so now this side is one of the trickier parts, I suppose. We're going to take our other handle that we made and we're going to stick it inside the back, right? Since this will be turned inside out, make sure that your finished side of the handle is facing the inside of the bag. Switch to this camera here. Three. There we go. Okay. So make sure that your finished side is towards the inside of the bag. Just going to stick it through here and bring it out the other side. It's going to be longer than what you need. Um, so some people like to have this handle tight up against the bag whenever it's folded inside out. Some people will actually kind of make a pucker on the inside and that way it loops out away from the bag. It's kind of up to you, whatever you want to do. Kind of keep it tight up against there. So on the first side, I'm just going to hold it in place. If you want to, you could glue this in place. We'll see if we can get it done just holding it. You just want to line up the center of the fold with the center of your, your seam, your stitch line right there. And we're just going to stitch across that corner. All right, you can switch that on. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to kind of keep it tight up against there. Just kind of the way, like the way that looks if it's up against the bag, rather than looping way out. So you pulled yours tight against there. Yep. And so a, lot of, a pretty good bit of excess here, about an inch and a quarter. And then make sure your seams lay in the same way when you stitch over it. Yeah. yeah. Kind of push that seam back in the same direction. running stuff. <laughs> really forceful on that first push there. All right. Got it all sewn up. We'll go back over here. All right, so now usually I'll go through and if you want, you can trim up your zipper tape a little bit. I'll make sure the ends are kind of burned so they don't fray out on the inside. Same thing with the thread. Now once you get all that, are you gonna trim up 
your leather as well that you had for your quarter inch seam allowance or just cut that tab of uh, the tabs off from yeah you know. sorry you're good <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off about, I don't know, a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch off the edge of that leather. Four, uh, Chad. Oh, head. So I'll try to lean back while I do this next one. Yeah, see if you can't cut a finger off. Can we talk about the price of this kit? Uh, you're welcome to. We can. 20, 20 bucks, I think, is what it was for the kit. 144-0789. Yep. And so we've got, a, we also have an old pattern out that comes with three different sizes of travel bag. We're going to do a little updating on the pattern here soon to reflect the same shape as this one. But uh, what's nice about the kit is you can buy the kit with your pre-cut parts and some good instructions to learn how to do it. And then you could get the pattern to do different sizes and you can get pretty creative with these little things. Yeah, so uh, if you are a wholesale customer, it's uh, 19 nineteen ninety nine, mm -hmm. and if you are just a retail um, customer, you haven't bought the Gold Club pricing, then it's twenty four ninety nine. Could you make your own? Say you bought this kit and you bought all the, you get all the pieces with it. Could you make yourself a pattern? Oh yeah. With this, just trace out your pieces onto Bontex or something to keep a little bit. Exactly. Yeah, just trace them out, save your instructions, and, and then uh, this is the medium size travel bag uh, our, yeah. in the pattern, right? So we have a, one that's smaller than that in our pattern, and then one that's a little bit bigger. All right, so we got all of our corners trimmed up, got our threads burned. Does it matter about our zipper tape here? Do we trim that off? We leave it? You can that? if you want to. It's not yeah. going to hurt anything if you leave it. It's just going to be on the inside of the bag. Like I said, I just burn the ends to make sure it doesn't get all frayed. Yeah. Uh, but now we're go we're ready to go ahead and turn it inside out. So to do this, I'll kind of smash the corners down a little bit. Let me go adjust this one up a little bit so you can get it where you're where you can handle it. All right. All right. So you just start bringing the corners out. You gotta be a little bit careful if you pull real hard on it, then uh, you might pop one of your seams. Get a good job stitching. Didn't get any of your seams too thin. It should be pretty good. What other patterns and kits do we got? Anything new coming down the line? Well, I'm, I am excited about doing the duffel bag video. Because yeah. I think it is a really neat pattern. A lot went into it. It's a pretty simple design, but we with the pattern we did uh, four different variations, and a lot of them look pretty cool. Um, so I'm pretty stoked on that one. That was a pretty involved pattern. Yeah. It's. I think it's going to be pretty cool. It, you know, there's four different styles that you can do with it. Whether you have, I think, wrapped handles, uh, uh, different pockets on the fronts. Can you interchange pieces of each one and add? stuff around is it that yeah yeah so it, it's pretty modular so it's the same basic body style and uh, a lot of the same construction style but it's different um, you know it's got different design elements different pockets different handles um, I mean what else makes up a bag but pockets and handles pockets and handles <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they were to hand stitches it asks would you use waxed all and thread uh, the wax thread for sure, but I'd probably just use a a diamond point yeah, chisel. So, yeah, the only time you, I really use an awl is if I'm stitching through real thick leather that I can't get a chisel through. and uh, Or if I'm going around like a weird curve that the chisel can't make it around, mm -hmm. I'll use an awl. Uh, but as far as the thread goes, yeah, some of that waxed rhino thread would be perfect. Yeah, and all these... Too terribly heavy. All these stitches you had, they were all... It's all straight stitching. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, you can use a chisel just fine. Do you feel to back? Let's see. Do you feel to backstitch as you pass on the handle part for added strength and lasting hold on that part? Yeah. So I think on this part you went back and forth on it a few times. Right, because I had a double a double thickness of this handle right here mm -hmm. in that seam, so I kind of backstitched once, dropping off the edge of it to, for added strength. This side you can do the same thing going on and off. 
Uh, this one was pretty thin, so I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But it's never a bad idea. Yeah. As long as you're hitting the same holes and you're not just perforating your leather and making it weaker. Make a nice perforated edge to tear along. Right. And so, yeah, I went ahead and I got all my corners pushed out and I kind of trained the seams like that, just pinching them down. If you start to, if one of your seams kind of pops out and you start to see stitching like that, you know, see your thread in there and it's not real attractive, what you can do is just kind of push it back in and then pinch the leather around it. And you can even go a little bit further, come over here. Just go, come over here to your granite, grab your hammer and just tap those seams out. Kind of. It just drains the leather and straightens it out. And it'll make a nice, tight, structured seam yeah, right there. Everybody likes a nice little travel bag dot kit that kind of stands up on its own. Right. It's real hard. You don't want to break the grain or anything. But yeah, it really squares it off pretty nicely and looks pretty good. So this comes in a pattern, or like I said, if you get the kit, then you can make your own pattern off of this. One of the other things that we're doing on the website is trying to get downloadable um, templates available for you. So it would be something where you go and you purchase it and uh, you get that downloadable pattern. It's going to send you an email to download it and uh, then you print it out yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Or you can take it to Kinko's and have them print it out on a, a wide bed printer. Um, some of the bigger ones like the duffel bag pattern are on a 36 inch printer that we print out so exactly and if you have one of those at your house or wherever 36 inch <laughs> blotter yeah that'd be great. great for you if not kinko's or i think fedex fedex will do it yeah. uh, does some um, or even the ups store i think does it as well nice that took us what about 51 minutes oh we started even we even started late so take a few more minutes off of that yeah man you train that and it stands it up nice it does it's a cool little dot kit we we've, we've been making these for years and they're they're they've stayed popular. They're pretty cool. We talked about doing it as like a reseller item where you could buy 10 of them or so, but it's just it's not really cost effective for the consumer to do that because it would be to buy 10 of these for us to make them. There's a lot of time, you know, 50 minutes to make one of them. If you're paying us to make that as a reseller when you could make them yourself, I think would be more beneficial to uh to you. I like it. Smells good too. Well, good. Nice job, Clayton. Next next week we'll do a full size duffel bag, maybe. It'll smell really leathery in here. Right. <laughs> so next Friday, Clayton's gonna be. You've heard it. He said it himself. I said maybe. Duff you said maybe. Maybe. I didn't listen to that part. So All Clayton's right. gonna be doing a duffel bag <laughs> next week. We'll pick out which one we want, and then uh, Wednesday, Denny and I. This last Wednesday, Denny and I were doing a hand stitching video, and he forgot how to do a, a hidden splice in it but he remember as soon as we got done with the video he walked out the door and he goes oh yeah i remember how to do it <laughs> the, you guys made him nervous so next wednesday we're going to do that and then we're going to go into um making sheridan style patterns for yours and how to uh how to put it together in the flow and how he makes his tap off patterns and so on and so forth so awesome wednesday and friday next week both at 11. any other questions chad stacy abigail all's quiet We'll give them a couple. Everybody's shaking their heads. They may have all left. They got annoyed by me and just left. All right. Well, it's Friday. I'm ready to go. Clayton's heading to the house now. He's got done with his dop kit video, and he's heading to the house. Might as well be. Have a great Friday, Clayton. All right. Thanks, bud. Thanks, guys. See ya.